Hi, welcome to Yogi's Home. I post new videos every Tuesday and sometimes Thursday. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you two firsts uh, that the Netherlands has achieved in the world. These are two interesting things that happened in 2019. Um, so yeah, if you would like to know which two firsts the Netherlands achieved in the world last year, then why don't you come on in, kick off your shoes and stay a while. I'm really glad you're here. Before we get into today's video, why don't we go ahead and start with the Dutch word of the day because yay. <laughs> so today's word of the day is going to be climate change. Now this is an interesting word and it's also applicable to something that we're going to be talking about in the video. The way that you say climate change in Dutch is climate verandering. Climate change. Okay, so the first first <laughs> that we're going to talk about today. It is about a climate related lawsuit that has been going on in the Dutch courts since 2013. Finally, uh, in December of 2019, the Dutch Supreme Court issued their decision. So between 2013 and 2019, this case was going through different levels uh, within the Dutch uh, legal system. And so finally, now we have a final, final answer from the Dutch Supreme Court. In this decision issued by the Dutch Supreme Court, the government of the Netherlands was required or is required to cut greenhouse emissions by 25%, whatever the level was in 1990. So whatever the levels were in 1990, it needs to come down by 25% by the end of this year, 2020. So it was kind of like a big, a big, and yeah, I don't know. I think that's a very short amount of time to achieve a really big thing. So I'm not sure how that's gonna happen, but this is what the Supreme Court said. How does this apply to being a first? So this is the first time that a nation was required by its courts to take action on climate. At the time of filming this video, there have been 1,442 climate lawsuits all over the world, but this Dutch decision is by far the strongest and the most um, heavy, I guess we would say, one um, out of all of them. So, and what the court did is actually really a strong enforcement of yeah, climate um, climate change rules. Now, before I move on to the next topic that we're going to talk about, I do want to read to you something that the Chief Justice of the Su Dutch Supreme Court, Justice, S hang on, I don't want to mess up his name, Chief Justice Streifkerk. So Chief Justice Streifkerk, um, what he said about the climate lawsuit. So I'm sorry, I'm going to be reading, but I think it's really interesting. So the Chief Justice said that arguments saying that a cut in emissions in the Netherlands wouldn't have a big effect on global levels did not absolve a country from taking measures to reduce its own emissions. Every country is responsible for its share. Now, I really resonated with this um, comment and with this emotion and with this thought, and I really wish that other governments would take stronger action because yeah it's easy to say oh well we're just a small country we don't really pollute that much or you know it's not going to make such a big difference but i feel like if everybody just took some responsibility for their own emissions you know the world would look like a very very different place i mean as i'm filming this we are in the midst of a global health scare. I don't want to say it because I don't want to get demonetized. It's being demonetized on YouTube right now if you talk about it. But in the midst of this global health scare, which you guys know what I'm talking about, um, I've seen things like, you know, in the countries where people ha have been asked to stay home, how much air pollution levels have changed uh, for the better how much like this has been like a break for the world. Um, so I do think that even small actions on the parts of small countries like the Netherlands can have a big meaningful impact if other people do it. So I'm really proud to be living in the Netherlands that we are part of this. Um, not that I'm not, we're not part of, I'm living, to be living in a country where the Supreme Court is really thinking 
for the global greater good. So thumbs up um, to all of the Supreme Court justices and also Justice Strafkirk for these words. I really appreciate that. Now, not necessarily directly related to this, but I do want to talk about it because I found it um, really interesting the way that this these protests were carried out. So the Dutch government is trying to reduce um, emissions and pollution. And I know that they're working on that, not related necessarily to this case, but it's what the Dutch government is doing. Um, and in like December, January, so December 2019, January 2020, there were some protests that were being carried out by people who um, who were being kind of hit with a, with a big chunk of the burden of reducing their emissions, namely farmers and um, construction workers or yeah, construction workers. So I'm wondering if any of you are farmers or construction workers and you participated in the protests, please let me know in the comments. I'm curious how it was from your perspective. Um, what was it like? Because I only watched it kind of from the outside. I was in the city center during some of the protests. So I did see basically what the farmers did and also the, the construction workers is they took all their big heavy equipment and machinery and basically drove it into the city center of the Hague, um, completely blocked all the roads, um, really got a lot of attention. It was a peaceful protest, but it was very impactful, at least from my perspective, seeing, seeing the highway with zero cars and yet all these tractors and construction vehicles and everything was really eye-opening and I do understand the issues that come with reducing emissions and trying to fix the crisis that's happening right now on the, on the planet. Um, I don't think that one party should carry the whole burden of everything. I understand that this is a difficult complex and complicated political issue and of course there are going to be some parties who are going to be aggrieved or who are going to be like more there's going to be a, a higher burden on them than on others um so i'm not saying anything against either party the dutch government or the farmers or construction workers i just wish i wish that there was a better solution i wish that there was an easier way um but yeah on that depressing note, <laughs> let's move on to the more uplifting um, first of the Dutch. And I really like this one as well. I find it really, really uplifting and happy, which is why I saved it for last. <laughs> so after that climate change issue, let's talk about, let's talk about stray animals. Yeah. This is the first country in the world to completely eradicate homelessness for dogs. So there are currently zero stray dogs in this country. Wow. Two thumbs ups for that. <laughs> so if a little bit of a historical background, basically back in the 1800s um, in the Netherlands, it was seen as a bit of a status symbol to have a dog. Um, and then when the, when rabies broke out, um, when rabies broke out in the 1900s in this country, most people just shoved their dogs away. So dog homelessness was really an epidemic here. And there was so, so, so much pet homelessness. Um, but of course, those were the times and that's what was happening. So people didn't want to get sick, of course. Um, and so ever since then, so almost for 200 years, the Dutch have been dealing with this stray animal population and homelessness, um, which is a big issue in other countries too. How were the Dutch able to achieve this incredible feat of eradicating dog homelessness in this country? Let's talk about it. So it took a group of people with varying backgrounds from legislature to public health officials to vet, uh, vet people, animal advocates, everybody. They all got together and they decided that the first step, of course, is sterilization because the less um, homeless puppies there are, the less homeless adult dogs there will be. So, of course, sterilization was the first step. 
But of course, it was also important to do this in a timely manner. So over the course of a few months, of some some months, they this team of people was able to spay and neuter. I guess we say that in English, it's a different. So kastrier, I think it's only one word in Dutch for you castrate. Um, female and male dogs. Let me know if I'm wrong on that below. But when I tried to Google Translate, it was kastrier and kastrier. So I don't know. But um, basically, they were able to sterilize 75% of the homeless dog population in just a matter of months. After each sterilization, the dog was checked by a vet, brought up to date on vaccinations, and yeah, just their overall, overall well-being was examined. Once they achieved that, then the next step was legislation. So the Dutch government at this point came into play by passing laws saying that all animals, including stray dogs, were entitled to a quality of life. To encourage people to take this seriously, these laws came with some very serious fines. So you could be fined up to $16,000 or face three years in prison um, if you did not uh, enforce or follow the law. Next up, what they wanted to do is increase the taxes on store-bought pets. Now, this is because they wanted to encourage adoptions. So by taxing things uh, that are like more luxury or whatever, you're always going to encourage some other behavior. So I think that was a really smart move. So yes, you can still buy a dog in a pet shop or whatever, or from a breeder, but it's going to come with a much higher tax implication than adopting an animal from a shelter. In addition, the Dutch government created a new animal welfare task force. So they're kind of like animal police. I've actually watched some of those videos, not from the Netherlands, but I've seen them on Animal Planet before, like animal police. So, but it's basically just people whose job it is to make sure that animals are being treated well um, by their owners and that those owners are not breaking the new animal welfare laws. So the last um, way that the Dutch government implemented this, um, yeah, that they were able to get rid of stray animals is by having a system like a, an advertisement whereby they really encouraged people to adopt and not shop for their um, pets. And in doing so, the way that they did this, they made people feel like they were actually working with the government and not fighting against it. So it brought together this inclusive, like we are all on the same team kind of feeling. Collectively, people in this country have saved the lives of over 1 million dogs by adopting and not shopping um, and yeah, helped abused, stray, neglected dogs have a much higher, better quality of life. So yay, Netherlands, like well done you. Um, I'm really, really, really excited to be sharing that with you guys. So what do you think? Tell me, do you have any pets? Did you buy them or did you adopt them? Tell me their names, send me a picture. And yeah, thank you guys. You guys, thank you so much for coming over today. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.